We are gathered here this evening to have a discussion and express our concerns on the recently publicized lawmaking agenda of the government. The content of the law will be discussed by other presenters. I wish to flag some issues of concern. What we see is a clear thread in all these laws is an effort to discourage and, ex and repress criticism, dissent, and objective public debate in the formulation of laws. The essence of democracy is that lawmaking should be consultative. And we have good examples of that, especially in the Right to Information Act, in the Domestic Violence Act, and so on. But here are laws which are done, we don't know in what environment and in, con in context. And at the same time, they set norms and standards, which it's very clear undermine the very foundation of democracy. The government has already uh, engaged in policies which have imposed untold hardship on the people. And their voice of protest is articulated on the street and in social media. And you will see from the discussions that these laws are an effort to silence that voice and deny the people's right to participate and they make their voice known in the matter of governance, which is a, the foundation of democracy. Lawmaking can either protect or violate the fundamental rights guaranteed to the people. And they therefore impact on our rights of freedom of speech, expression, information, livelihoods, personal and food security. It is true that we as citizens have a duty to unite in times of a national crisis. But this is a man-made crisis due to flawed governance. We were not responsible for this. And therefore, in seeking our unity, we would expect that there's a course correction and a response to the flawed governance. But what we see is a regular saga of corruption in sugar, in medical drugs, and now even in cricket and all these headlines. We see embedded corruption, politicization in public administration, and even worse, absolutely poor administration of criminal justice, and that has become a daily experience. So corruption, maladministration, and violation of the rule of law have become the reality and the experience in our daily lives. In a situation where burdens are imposed in the process of doing what is necessary, for example, in reformulating taxation policy, where is the equity, where is the balance in engaging in this kind of policy formation? When lawmaking becomes a central response to our economic crisis, we have every right to examine that lawmaking and see whether there is a balance with regard to the functioning of the state in governance and respect for the sovereignty of the people and the rights of the people. We know that in our country, even the courts cannot question laws that have already been passed. And therefore, if in an economic crisis you pass laws which undermine the very foundation of democracy, then where is the accountability to the people? So we must not facilitate and help to undermine democracy and create a path to authoritarian dictatorial governments. What does democracy mean to us? When I stand here, sadly I recall, 10 years ago, as being on a platform with Ukul Jayasurya, talking about Yaha Palane and good governance. And today, as pointed out earlier, we are again engaged in that discourse. So do we know what democracy is? I take comfort in the fact that we have a strong cultural and artistic heritage in the Sinhala tradition, the Gamamaha and Gamarala stories in Sokari Nato, and I'm sure replicated in the Tamil tradition too, of satire, of criticism of power. And again, in this country, if we look back, exercising the right of franchise, our people have rejected authoritarianism and wanted democracy. See the elections of 56, of 77, of 94, 
of 2015 and 2016 in response to what was seen as weak and ineffective and poor governance. And then, of course, the Aragalia, a strong voice to say, we want democracy, we want system change. So we know what democracy is about. Contrast that with dictatorship. What does a dictatorship do? It is the, absolutely the reverse of that. And what it does is it destroys the balance between the institutions of governance, the legislature, parliament, the courts, and the executive, and seeks to take on all those powers in one central institution. That is a distinction. And that balance between the three institutions is of the foundation of democracy because it's based on the social contract between a sovereign people and a government where allegiance is based on trust, on the capacity to fulfill and protect the rights of the people. And so in a dictation, we also have this dangerous phenomenon of the vision of a single leader, an individual, perhaps honest, but with a sense of personal destiny, which encourages that leader to perceive that they are the found, found, the fount of wisdom, the only person who can provide the answers. And of course, that necessarily means a tendency to law make and say, you shut up and you sit down. And that then destroys the very accountability of the legislative process to the people. Indeed, it is interesting that just today, in the morning, I saw a post which said, be patient, let the executive president decide. So this cult of putting everything, backing everything on one leader is a total undermining of democracy. It is in that situation that we have a right to say no we will not shut up, we will express our views and we will ask that law making and policy formulation respects our rights. In this context, parliament has a role and responsibility in protecting the rights of the people because it is an institution of its own. It is key in the areas of finance and public security and many others. So, Parliamentarians may ask to shut up and sit down in parliament, but that's not what we expect of them in, in, in relation to their interaction with the public. They seek our vote and they have no right to shut up and not respond when lawmaking violates the fundamental rights of our people. I would like to cite from the preamble of our constitution to indicate why our public expectations uh, why are the expectations of the public are uh, correct? What does it say, the preamble to the 1978 constitution, that the representatives have taken on a responsibility to achieve the goals of a democracy and the in immutable principles of representative democracy, assuring to the people freedom, equality, justice, and, and also the independence of the judiciary. That is their responsibility. And if that is their responsibility, they owe it to the people of this country to stand up and say no to these shut up laws. It is also important for parliamentarians and citizens to know that the dangers of a single leader's vision and aspiration and incitement dissent is there is total inconsistency in lawmaking. How is it? that you can, you can ask for uh, pluralism, respect for the rights of minorities, and have an anti-terrorism act, which is a replication of the PT. How is it that you can have a gender equality law and a bill on women, peace, and security, and have a PT? And as pointed out, how is it that you can have so many laws on violence against women and children, which are not enforced, and then not enforced for years, no resources for enforcement, and then have an online safety bill, which has a presumption to say, this is being done to prevent violence against women and children. So 
in conclusion, I think what we have to say today is democracy will survive only when we fight for it, as it has been said. And to do that, we need a partnership of citizenry, of professionals, etc. All of us to say that we want democracy and not autocracy and dictatorship in this country. And if that message can be given powerfully, we also say that you cannot have economic growth without righteous governance that is respectful of the fundamental rights of a sovereign people uh, to have the quality of life that they have been guaranteed in that constitution. And that last text in the constitution, as the Pali text, it says, Devo Vasatu Kalena Sasa Sampatu Ketucha Pito Bhavatu Lokocha Raja Bhavati Dhammika. What does that say? May the rains fall in season, may there be a good harvest, may, I be, may there be well being in the world, and may the ruler be righteous. So we want rights, righteousness is the protection of rights. Thank you. Thank you.